Hello, my name is Kevin and this is the Love Decanters channel. So, um, yeah, I'm not really plundering my mum's kitchen. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give her everything back. Um, but because I've been going out to various places and looking at what they've got, um, yeah, and I'm being harassed by my mum's cat Mimi here. Just so you're aware, she's a uh, psychopath, psychopath that requires constant stroking. Um, so, come on. Settle down. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, I'm at my mum's. Uh, I was, well, actually, I was here a couple of days ago and I was putting some stuff away for her and I noticed that she's got some interesting pressed glass in the cupboard. So I thought, yeah, I don't normally look, this pressed glass is not what I normally look for. I thought I can have a dig around and see what she's got, um, make a video, um, have a bit of fun with it, um, see what's going on. Um, Try not to get harassed by her, by Mimi. Um, yeah, that bit's not working very well. Um, so yeah, my mum's gone upstairs for a nap. So I, I've taken all her her glass out of the cupboards, given a bit of a wash, and um, some of it's in use still, but it, it is what it is. And um, yeah, we can have a play with this. So my mum's in her eighties, but some of this stuff has come from. Uh, my grandparents and um, I think an aunt as well. So, yeah. So some of this is is on the older side of uh, press glass. So I think it's all probably still twentieth century. Um, but yeah, let's have a play with this. And there's a few other bits and pieces that are interesting as well. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to show you, which is probably the least interesting, is I've got a couple of salts. There's a lot of glass in these. Um, yeah. Probably Victorian. Um, this one's really been in the wars. Might have been from a hotel or something. Um, I think this one might be later. This looks more like a 50s, 60s kind of style. So yeah, a couple of those. Open salts. So for those that don't know, you'd have a little spoon and you'd have your salt in here and you just spoon your salt onto your food. Out of here, you wouldn't use a salt cellar. First reference I'm looking at is the identification of press of English press glass by uh, Jenny Thompson, and um, yeah, so what they've got here, they're not exactly the same, but this one here has that same kind of rounded top. You can see as the um, as the other salts as the salts I was just showing you, and uh, yeah, these are from. Uh, Sowerby's 1880s pattern book. So there might be not be Sowerby's, um, but that might be a reasonable date for the design of these because this kind of rounded top is not usual. Um, so it might be that it was fashionable for a period of time. Next, I'm going to show you um, is a little sugar bowl. It, it has this look kind of crazy. I think this is probably 50s, 60s pattern. Um, there's absolutely no marks on it. It's kind of cute with the little legs on it and everything, but yeah, that's, it is what it is. I have no idea. I will check through my books and see if I can find anything like it, but I'm doubtful. Straight from off the worktop from my mum's kitchen is this um, sugar bowl. What's interesting, it's got these um, patterns with crisscross and stars yeah this is very like kind of Irish Regency pattern uh, my mum said that she got this I think in the 60s or 70s so um, whether it's older than that or not <laughs> the way the, the jug looks makes me think it's it's probably is you know 50s, 60s, 70s just the way you know the lip is and everything so yeah Again, I'm going to try, but I don't think I'm going to be able to find out who made it. So here we go with another um, sugar bowl and cream jug. This one's, I, to me, this is more interesting because the design is what it is. Um, it's not copying any previous periods. This looks very 50s, very 50s. Um, and again, uh, this one, I did actually look more carefully before I picked it up this time. And um, yeah, this one doesn't have any marks either. But I will still try and figure it out. But yeah, it, it 
this kind of funky 50s, 60s pattern here. Uh, yeah, that's quite cool. So I have here a dessert service. Apparently we used to have like trifles in these. Um, this is interesting. The, the cutting on here. So this, this is reminiscent of, uh, in the last um, video I did on um, Georgian and Regency uh, f uh, reproduction of fake decanters, there was a decanter with this pattern on it. Very similar. Um, and this, like, fan cutting here, this is like Irish glass. So this is kind of faux Regency cut, cut pattern on it. It, um, the big bowl has the word France on it somewhere. I did have a really good look, and I can't find it now. Um, but, um, yeah, so it's looking like kind of English Irish Regency, um, but it's made in France. Um, Mum says she bought these in the 70s, so, um, yeah. And apparently I should remember them for having trifle out of. So as they say, um, check this out. This is a Regency decanter. Oh, it's a copy of a Regency decanter. But if you look at this pattern here, with this shape and then these diamonds, yeah, it's just like, and this is a, I expect this will be, although it's a rare pattern, this will be on other Regency decanters. This shape with this in combination, in fact, it's really surprising. Well, not surprising, because everybody was copying everybody, making pastiches of um, Regency cutting pat patterns as something that's gone on throughout the 20th century. And uh, yeah, they see it as a piece of pressed glass from France. So here we are with a trifle service, dessert service. Apparently we had trifle out of this one as well. Um, and this is another one that was made in France. Um, this one is a bit more stylistically, a bit more interesting. Um, this pan here, I have, I, I will probably show it when I go home um, as part of this video. I have a a Webb Corbett decanter from the 1950s, which is a modern decanter from the 1950s with a modern design from the 1950s. And it has this similar circles with little vertical lines above it. So that's quite interesting. And yeah, it's made in France. I presume these are the only people I knew that were importing glass into the UK from France in the 70s was Crystal Dark. But what do I know? Um, probably everybody was having a go at trying to import stuff to us. So, so yep. So that's the next bit. Here we go with another decanter. Um, this is a Webb Corbett decanter from the 1950s. And yeah, look at this pattern here, with the same circles with the vertical lines, sim very similar look. So yeah. So this is a modern design from the 1950s. And check out the stuffer. Doesn't get much more modern looking than that. Uh, I can't remember if this is marked. Uh, no, I don't think it is. So yeah, um, so that that piece of French glass looks to be um, copying this design, and it does help age it. I don't mind um, because it is a period design. So apparently these are from my grandparents. Uh, this is a pickle jar, and look at the patterning. Again, copying kind of Regency cutting with the shallow diamonds cut into it. This is looking more like a Victorian piece. Um, it Apparently my grandparents use this as a celery vase. It does have quite a bad crack in it. And I looked at it and I thought, oh, be a mark, be a mark. But no, I've had a really good look at it. And um, there is no mark in this. But yeah, that's really it has a different look and feel to all the others i think this is probably yeah it looks much more victorian um than the other pieces that i've been showing you and yeah i will go through my my book on press glass and try and find them so uh, this one here i think this is a bit newer 
Um, it's got France written on, so it's probably crystal dark or something like that. Um, probably 80s. This one, though, I think is earlier. You can just see the difference in the color and the glass. Um, I don't think this has got anything written in it. No, no, no. And um, yeah, this looks very 70s. Um, and this is in the um, 20th century, uh, Miller's 20th century glass book by Andy McConnell. But unfortunately, he doesn't give any date on it. So yeah, I've been hunting around uh, on eBay trying to see, because it looks different. I've not seen a beer glass like this. Um, I had a hunt around on eBay. It's very hard to find another one like this, especially a pint one. Um, and um, yeah, apparently it's worth something, probably worth 20 quid that, that, that beer glass there because it's an unusual one and people have started collecting the ones with the, the labels on. So um, yeah, it's, it's quite an interesting glass. I nearly forgot to point out, it also has the, um, the pint mark on it there with the crown. So um, this doesn't have anything. It only has 33 written at the bottom, so it's a third of a litre, I presume, So because it's France. So, um, Miller's 20th Century uh, Glass by um, Andy McConnell has this beer glass here. Um, yeah, his dates are not very precise. He doesn't name who they're by. He just shows you a pile of glasses, 1950s to 1980s. He says two to ten pounds. Um, but I've looked on eBay, and and this particular glass seems to be attracting higher prices, um, higher price, more than ten pounds, even for a half pinter, which is why I think um, the pint one is worth a bit more. So this glass is interesting to me. Um, my parents in the army, I am an army kid, and um, yeah, it has the word NAFI etched onto it. It looks like it's sandblasted on there. Um, that stands for uh, Navy Army Air Force Institute. Um, so this might have come from a NAFI club. It's got British made written underneath. Um, there's no pint, I'm just looking around. No, there's no pint mark on it. And um, yeah, it has, if you look at, look at the surface wear there, yeah, this has been in in the wars with the army, um, so that's probably seen um, hard life in the NAFI. And um, yeah, I'm seeing as my dad left at the end of the 70s, this will be from the 60s or 70s. So this jug here, I reckon this will be from the 70s. I remember this jug, a lot of custard's been drunk out of this jug. Um, not directly, usually you pour it out. Um, and stylistically, it's very Regency as well, with the different bands, different kinds of hobnails, um, trimming around the edges, trimming on the handle, um, absolutely no mark. Yeah. But yeah, but I can tell you this has been around since at least the 70s, so if you see one of these, you know it's going to be 40 plus years, maybe as old as 60 or 70 years, you never know. Um, again, I'll, I'm going to plug around and see if I can find out anything. And then after I've done this, I'll, I will check some things and see if I can insert some pieces to tell you what some of these things are. So the jug, the pattern is called Wexford by Anchor Hocking. And it's, can you see the dates there, 1962 to 1998. Um, I know that we... We had out in, at least in the 70s, so um, may, maybe older than that. And if we scroll down through the patterns, where is the jug? Where is it? There it is. There is the jug. And a replacement for it costs $15.99. Um, rather sadly, I went on to the, tried to get onto the Anchor Hocking Wexford, the Anchor Hocking Glassware website, and um, yeah, they won't let me even look at their website without putting my email address in. I, I would say something rude, but I'll just say, yeah, I wasn't going to do that. So this is a cake stand. It's quite interesting from the point of view of, well, from my point of view, in that the design is not sort of like a rehash of a Georgian Regency, etc., etc. It um, looks like it's from the 50s or 60s with a giant flower in the middle, like a sunflower. 
head or something. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no mark. I haven't even been able to say that it says France or anything like that on it. Um, but yeah, that's... My mum's had this a long time, so this would be from at least the 70s. Um, so, yeah. So, I think this is a Alexander Hardy Williamson design. It's quite cool. My mum thinks there's more of these somewhere in the house. I couldn't find any more. She said the others were purple. Um, yeah. I will pull out my... Um, these are in... The different shapes of these are in the... Um, Miller's 20th Century Glass book by Andy McConnell and I'll, I should be able to look it up and tell you what shape this is. So I'm looking here at the um, Miller's 20th Century Glass um, by Andy McConnell and in it it has um, the um, Alexander Hardy Williamson glasses and it shows you the different shapes. The, apparently there's 1700, over 1700 designs so yeah you, if you want to collect them all, good luck to you. But yeah, the um, the glass with the silver rim and the sort of like the leaves on it. Yeah, I believe it's a a gay time glass. It's that shape. It's got a nice thick base like that as well, and silver rim. So I reckon it's that. So here's another one. Um, this is a different shape. I think this shape might be called a chubby. I'm not sure by Alexander Hardy Williamson. Um, I will. Um, I said I'll pull out the page from from the book and um, tell you what that shape is. Back with uh, Miller's 20th Century Glass, um, and yeah, I think the um, that glass is a chubby. So um, yeah, and you look at the prices; they're not they're not expensive. If you wanted to go out collecting these glasses, one first you have to learn these. There's six basic shapes here, and you'd have to learn those. I do see them around. You'll see them in some of my other videos. So um, they, they must well, if there's seventeen hundred designs, they must have been making thousands of these things. So um, what you've got to watch out for is that actually he's saying here some non non Williamson ones. So um, yeah, so you. Need to keep your eye out. But if you're just collecting these these kind of 50s glass, 50s, 60s glasses, yeah, they will be a nice little collecting because they do look to be pretty cheap. So I have this bunch of um, German beer glasses. Transfers on. Um, according to Miller's 20th century glass, um, these are becoming quite collectible. Um, I remember these. These are probably one of the first times I had beer. Um, I don't recognise any of the beer names, and apparently the more obscure they are, uh, the better. So I don't know if they've got any real value. They are. I can tell you they're from the 1970s because that's when we were drinking out of them. Um, but yeah, so this is like a new collectible with um, German beers. With ob more obscure, the better. And seeing as I've, I literally don't know any of these beers and never seen them on the shelves here in the UK. I imagine they're all somewhat obscure. So the last thing I'm going to show you from my mum's kitchen is a couple of cake dishes or cake stands or they're probably for sweets or something like that. Um, the thing that makes these things a little bit better is they have a reg number. Can you see that there's a RD there? So um, yeah, they're kind of with this fan cutting on the corners or fake fan cutting it's supposed to be emulating Irish glass um, but I will try and find out who they buy when they were made etc etc so um, yeah I'll have a bit of fun doing that so I'm back with the um, identification of English press glass book and um, yeah those um, reg numbers on, on those cake stands they were uh, Two seven one nine seven seven. So we don't have that number here. There's a gap, but you've got this these dates here. This is from where's the date? Oh, there it is, eighteen ninety six. So you know it was registered somewhere between these two dates in eighteen ninety six. So that's quite a tight 
date. So we don't know who made it, but we do know early 1896. Nearly forgot this. What looks to be a little Victorian um, measuring, pouring thing for cooking with. Yeah, what these measurements mean. You can hardly read what it says at the top because it's been done so quickly. So, yeah, this is Victorian. It could be almost any time post-1805 because you see the little mark on the bottom there, that little thing. That means it's been made with a gadget. You can see it's got a certain amount of wear where it sits on the table. But, yeah, these numbers were done so fast you can barely read them. Um, yeah, and probably use English. I suspect one of those says ounces or something maybe at the top. I don't know. Um... What is it supposed to be saying? But um, you can make out some of the numbers, but yeah, it's a thing people don't use anymore. So I hope you enjoyed that. I don't know if this is the real end because I've got to go home and look a pile of stuff up. And yeah, if it is the real end, yeah, please like and subscribe. Um, it was a real trip down memory lane to me, for me, so yeah. It, just going through my mum's stuff. I, I never really thought about it before until I started doing these uh, videos. So yeah, and um, so yeah, I hope you um, enjoyed this. No cats were hurt in the making of this video. <laughs>